on, um, please bear with me. My voice is a little bit <laughs> on the mend. Um, so thank you so much for having us. This is really exciting. Um, just for clarification, I'm Gowrie and this is Neha. Um, so we're the last ones, um, so I swear we'll try and keep this quick. So we're here to talk to you about um, a new organization called Brainstorm that Justin just described formally, as he mentioned. It, um, Brainstorm is the Stanford Laboratory for Brain Health Innovation and Entrepreneurship, and it was started by a group of psychiatrists from across the country as a special initiative of the chair of psychiatry at Stanford. So our whole team is committed to bringing sort of a cross-sector approach to solving problems within brain health. So how did this initiative come about? I think each of our founding partners could probably give you a different story as to what brought them to us, but I want to share with you a little bit about my story um, just before we get into the details of what exactly we're doing. So I think about 10 years ago, um, while working at an uh, underprivileged school um, in India, I was tasked with teaching a class on civic engagement to children between the ages of about 8 and 14. Um, most of them had come from broken families, I mean, trauma that I couldn't even imagine, and yet they maintained this optimism about how they could all affect change in their communities. So we took that excitement, and for one particular exercise, um, we split the kids up into groups of three um, and had them choose a specific problem in their communities and then work together to come up with a solution. Simple enough. <laughs> Um, these kids identified, my gosh, problems ranging from police corruption to pollution to stigma to addiction. What was striking was not just the diversity and like the gravity of the problems that they were actually coming up with at such a young age, but also that one, the solutions they came up with were actually incredibly thoughtful, nuanced, and practical. And two, they were able to engage in a discussion later around what more they needed to know and to do in order to implement these solutions in their communities. So I think after reflecting with each of the teams, it became clear that much of their success came from having people with different backgrounds and experiences share their own perspective on a shared problem. The solutions wouldn't have been the same had each, any of them um, approached them alone. So fast forward 10 years, and I think we all, at some degree, find ourselves in a field with plenty of problems and in dire need of solutions. Also over the past few years, the public demand for mental health awareness, access, and treatment has rapidly increased, and stakeholders have taken notice. Recently, and just today, we've heard about so many new and exciting solutions emerging in our field, many of which incorporate the use of technology. However, at the same time, as we all know, I think a big issue is that it can be really difficult to transition these ideas from conception to then a local and then ideally more widespread clinical implementation. So, as we all know, there are so many talented people working to solve these issues. We need to bring that talent and expertise together, move away from operating in silos, and come up with well-informed and end-user-oriented solutions that scale. So we decided to start Brainstorm, um, a truly kind of collaborative initiative that works towards creating connections to fill these gaps by intentionally bringing together people from medicine, business, technology, design, policy, you have it, to create effective, affordable, and scalable solutions. Sorry. So this culture of um, collaboration really starts with our founding team. Um, although Brainstorm is based out of Stanford, I, myself and Nehar are here, and our full team is full of physicians from institutions across the country. As our team has grown, we've gained the support and commitment from the greater Stanford academic community and have taken on fellows and interns to our staff with a host of backgrounds, including business, law, computer science, engineering, marketing, and communications. We're also building out a board of advisors and directors and experts from across fields, um, including Dr. Tom Insel, who will be giving the keynote tomorrow afternoon. Now, <laughs> finally, for what we're doing. Um, we've set to achieve our aims through three pillars um, for a concurrent, I think, bottom-up and top-down approach. Number one, educate, um, focusing on providing students and professionals with the knowledge they need to create these solutions. Two, collaborate, building a network to unite key stakeholders in the brain health innovation ecosystem. And third, create, we're partnering with academia, nonprofits, government, researchers, and industry to, to guide the development of ideas into successful ventures that are effective, sustainable, safe, and suited for the clinical space. So to tell you a bit more about that is um, Dr. Chowdhury. 
Hi, I'm Neha Chaudhary, and I'm going to walk you through um, some examples of what we're actually doing in each category to just to make things a little bit more concrete. So our first major educational initiative has actually been a university course on leadership and innovation in mental health. And the course is being taught by our team out at Stanford. Um, it uh, includes students from the undergraduate college, but also the medical school, business school, engineering, law school. And students actually work to come up with their own startup ideas. And what I want to point out here, I'm not going to go through every single one of the ideas here, but I did want to note the diversity of the types of projects and ideas people are coming up with, from apps, products, services, social media campaigns, starting new nonprofits. The next big project we have in the works right now, which I'm personally very excited about, is a book that we have on the way. It's called Two Billion Reasons Why, The Hope and Hype of Technology Ventures in Transforming Brain Health. So in writing this book, we are speaking with industry leaders, so VCs, CEOs of companies, clinicians, politicians, designers, and other stakeholders. And we're also performing an industry analysis of the hundred, of about 100 brain health startups that have received the most funding to date. And we were recently honored by McKinsey and the Financial Times. Uh, we were shortlisted for a prize that they had. And the reason that we're particularly excited about this is because this is some sort of stamp of, of endorsement from the business world saying, hey, we want to hear about mental health, even if it's clinicians speaking. So this is, it's, it's no, <laughs> it's, it's encouraging the type of crosstalk that we're so excited about, right? It's, it's bringing together different worlds and looking at this intersection between technology, business, medicine, et cetera, and all the people in this room. So next is Collaborate. Um, we've had several different events. This was our first one. We had our, our official launch event in Palo Alto exactly a month ago. Um, we had speakers come from several companies and talk about some of the work that they've been doing. And we have had companies demo some of their products. And next, this was actually a very exciting event. I'm going to spend just a couple more minutes or a little bit more time talking about this. There was a virtual reality and augmented reality in psychiatry conference at Stanford Medical School, and we hosted an AR, VR innovation lab. So what we did is we had people submit pitches or submit applications online in the form of video pitches. Their pitches included not only the, the problems that they wanted to solve and the solutions, but they had to include a business plan. and the clinical applicability and how they envisioned this product or idea working in the clinical space. Then we selected six finalists and we actually, our team coached the finalists in developing a pitch for the actual conference. Now during the conference we had six finalist teams pitch their ideas to a panel of judges and to a live audience, but the most important part of this entire event was the next segment, which is something we call the collaboration zone. So we had the finalist teams split up and work in breakout teams with audience members to revise their pitches and to incorporate feedback, questions, uh, concerns brought up by audience members and really dissect their problem and their solution that they were proposing. Then they got back up there and they repitched rapid fire incorporating that feedback um, and the, the winner, winning prizes are listed up there. And last in the section that we're going to mention today is the brainstorming sessions that we've started. These are monthly sessions, and they were actually inspired by the work that Dr. Aragam did with the kids in India, or the class that she held. So we pick a theme or pick a problem to solve, get a group of people in the room to discuss that problem. And the first one was on digital phenotyping. We had a keynote address by Dr. Paul Dagum, the CEO of MindStrong. And last is our create arm of what we're doing. So in building this network and in, in meeting people like you and events like the ones that we showed you above, we've received a lot of specific requests from, from people. And we found that the requests fell in one of two categories. So number one, people had amazing ideas, but they weren't exactly sure how to make them work in the clinical space. They were wondering, are there barriers to implementation? Are physicians going to use this? Do patients care? Can they use it? Who's going to pay for it? Those types of questions. And number two, 
people come to us saying, you're interacting with all these people in different fields outside of medicine and who are interested in this space in mental health or brain health in general. Can you help us find where our gaps are? What are we missing? What are our knowledge gaps? And how do we find the right people to connect with to help fill those gaps? So given the amount of requests, we decided to formalize this process and mobilize our network and our advisory board and um, provide expert consultation for anyone interested in building new ventures or with existing companies or projects looking to enter the brain health space. And within this broader, broader theme, we are gonna be co-hosting an event coming up in a couple of weeks with MIT Solve. They recently had a brain health challenge and four of the brain health challenge winners are going to be pitching their ideas to the audience and in a workshop style working with the audience to help take their ideas to the next level. And we want to invite you all to join. So the last couple of slides here, we wanted to share some of the insights that we have gained from you all, from the audience and attendees of the events that we've done so far. And I'm not gonna read all of these, but I do wanna share a couple of my favorite ones. The first one, be patient-centered. It seems simple, but I think it's something that can be easy to forget when you're developing a new solution or st starting a new business or have a new lab idea. Um, there was actually a firefighter in the room who said that he had a history of PTSD, and he said that he was at the conference to try to see if he could find some sort of virtual reality product that would help him with his PTSD symptoms. So he stood up and said, don't forget about your end users. I am here as an end user. What you're trying to develop is for me. Figure out what you need, to, what you need through me. So it sounds simple, but I think it's easy to forget to do. Communicate effectively. We all have ideas in our head. If we can't get them out, they may not go anywhere. Be persistent. Um, the ideas that we actually care about and keep going after and feel passionately about are the ones that are likely, more likely to succeed. Be flexible. We are in a field that is notorious for not being the most flexible. So if we can be flexible and we can say, we've hit a challenge, let's be ready to pivot a little bit with this idea, then we're more likely to be able to push some of these ideas forward. We need to understand the barriers as well. There's a lot of regulatory issues to keep in mind in healthcare as compared to in other industries, said one of the finalists at the event. And then of course, use multiple perspectives. And then last, we wanted to share some of the insights that we as the Brainstorm team have gained from doing some of these events uh, since the launch. And the first one is the most exciting. So people want to meet each other. People show up to events. You all want to talk to each other. You don't know it right now, but you do. Um, at our launch event, we had about 160 people show up. It was on a Friday night. People drove in from out of town. Um, for the first brainstorming event, we had over 70 people sign up, which was over capacity for a small classroom on campus. And the event was supposed to end at 9 p.m. People stayed talking till one in the morning. Um, and then just last, we don't have, we have to wrap up, but we do, I just wanna share this save the date. We have this event coming up November 29th. Um, if you go to stanfordbrainstorm.com, we're gonna be posting an Eventbrite invite shortly. Um, we would love to have all of you show up. I mean, look around the room. There's so much brain power in here right now. It's intimidating being up here as a trainee. So, I mean, I can't imagine what type of progress we'll make in just meeting, connecting, and brainstorming together. So, thank you for listening. <laughs>